Today, I'm going to go over the scariest serial killers from around the world. The list is ranked going from the least scary, which by the way is still terrifying, all the way to most scary, which let's just say, I think you'll be checking over your shoulder more often. 1. Jack the Ripper So, Picture this, London 1888, the East End is not the kind of place you'd want to stroll around at night, especially if you were a woman. Jack the Ripper was prowling around the dimly lit streets, and let's just say, his idea of a night out involved something a bit more sinister than a pint at the pub. The Ripper had a particular taste, targeting women who were sadly in the most vulnerable positions, making their living through prostitution. These weren't just murderers, they were gruesome works of a madman. He wasn't just killing, he was kind of like messing up his victims. I'm not really going to go into too much depth, but it wasn't the works of just like a random thug. And the scariest part, he was doing all this under the cover of darkness on weekends. Probably while everybody else was watching the Victorian Netflix or whatever they did for fun back then. The police threw everything they had into the investigation. They were out there with their magnifying glasses and those detective hat things. Okay, maybe not, but let's not ruin the image. Using every bit of forensic science they had available at the time. Bloodstains? They were on it. Eyewitness accounts? They had those covered. Despite their efforts, Jack clearly wasn't an idiot, and he managed to elude the authorities for, well, forever, never being caught. This guy was like the Voldemort of Victorian London, sparking an obsession that lasted well over a century. Books, movies, and endless theories about who he was. From a surgeon to a member of the royal family. And let's not forget the legions of ripperologists. Yes, that's an actual thing. These poor people have dedicated their lives to solving a mystery that seems to be impossible to solve. And through it all, Jack and Ripper has remained an enigma, a shadowy figure who's a testament to the dark side of human nature. If you thought Jack was scary, trust me, it gets way scarier with number two. Two, Aileen Warners. Imagine the worst possible start to life and then make it 10 times worse. That's pretty much Aileen Warners' childhood. Born in Rochester, Michigan in 1956, with a family tree that's more like a family tumbleweed. Aileen's early life was a storm of abuse, neglect, and a series of unfortunate events. Her dad was a really bad guy, like really, really bad. In fact, he did things that are so bad, I can't mention them on YouTube. But he isn't a huge part of the story because he decided to check out of life, well, early. And her mum must have thought she was participating in a relay race because she passed Aileen and her brothers to her grandparents faster than a baton. Now if you think this story takes a turn for the better, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but it's more like it took a turn off a cliff. The grandparents weren't exactly the cookies and warm hug types. We're talking about a lot of abuse and other bad stuff. Let's fast forward through a childhood that sounded like a nightmare. Aileen found herself embracing robbery to make ends meet. But here's where the plot thickened. In 1989 to 1990, Aileen turned Florida into her own personal hunting ground, claiming the lives of seven men. Caught in 1991, she argued self-defense. However, the judges thought otherwise, sentencing her to death. And yeah, that was kind of the end of Aileen. Now, I know Aileen seems like your stereotypical serial killer, you know, bad past, scary, and murdery. However, what makes the next one scary is their ability to hide in plain sight. Literally. Let me show you. 3. Ted Bundy America's horrifying charmer from the 1970s. This guy was like the evil twin of Prince Charming, using his good looks and charisma to lure unsuspecting young women into his grasp. Imagine that, someone who looks like they could be your next door neighbour, but instead of borrowing a cup of sugar, he's plotting something sinister. And by sinister, I mean, well murder. Bundy's killing spree was like a road trip from hell, with his crimes stretching across several states. It's like he was trying to collect a sinister souvenir from every place he visited. What makes Bundy stand out isn't just the brutal nature of his crimes, which often involved assault and murder obviously. But the way he did it, it was some kind of sick finesse. He played injured or fake being an authority figure to gain the victim's trust before showing his true monstrous self. The real kicker? The number of his victims remains a chilling mystery, with estimates ranging from 30 to possibly over 100. That's not just insane, it's a haunting legacy of loss and pain. Capturing Bundy was a saga in itself, highlighting the need for better cooperation across state lines because, to be honest, the police threw everything at the case, apart from their common sense it seems. And let's not forget the media circus his trials turned into, setting the stage for our modern obsession with true crime stories. Bundy was like the dark star of the show, even daring to represent himself in court. Because 
Why not add a little more drama into the mix? His escapes from custody were stuff out of a horror movie, adding to his legend and making a mockery of the law enforcement efforts to keep him behind bars. It was like watching a cat and mouse game, except this mouse was a vicious killer. Bundy's execution in 1989 may have ended his life, but not the fascination into his dark deeds. Talking of somebody else who hid in plain sight is number four, Harold Shipman. Imagine your friendly neighborhood doctor, the one you trust with your life, turn out to be your worst nightmare. That's exactly who Harold Shipman was, a respected general practitioner in England. Yeah, I'm kind of scared of this one. With a dark secret that would shock the world. Born on January 14th, 1946, Shipman was anything but this. He hid behind the facade of a caring healthcare professional while being one of the most prolific serial killers recorded in history. Shipman had a particular choice of victims, primarily targeting elderly women. His method? Administrating lethal doses of diamorphine and then covering his tracks with falsified medical records. It's like he played God, deciding who lived and who dies, all under the guise of a natural cause. But how did this monster get caught? Well, it wasn't some high-tech investigation or a criminal mastermind slip-up. It was the keen eye of a co-worker and the unwavering determination of a victim's daughter that led to his downfall. The co-worker noticed an alarming pattern in the cremation certificate Shipman signed off, and Kathleen Grundy's daughter simply refused to believe her mother died of natural causes. This skepticism sparked an investigation unveiling the horrifying truth. Shipman's trial revealed that he was guilty of murdering 15 patients, but the grim reality suggests he he might have been responsible for more than 200 deaths. 5. John Wayne Gacy. Let's dive into a story that sounds like it's straight out of a horror movie, but unfortunately, it's far too real, hence this video. Picture this, a guy known to his community, a charitable fellow who entertains kids as the quote-unquote pogo clown. Sounds like a decent chap, right? Wrong. Did you forget the title? This is John Wayne Gacy, an American serial killer whose life story twists the narrative of a friendly neighborhood clown into something straight out of your nightmares. Born on March 17, 1942 in Chicago, Gacy's story is a cocktail of contradictions. One hand, he's an active member of his community, a regular guy if you will. On the other hand, he's committing atrocities that would make your skin crawl. Between 1972 and 1978, Gacy lured at least 33 young men and boys into his sinister trap. Most of them at his Norwood Park township home near Chicago. His method? A mix of promises of work, money, or by impersonating a police officer. Talk about a breach of trust. Now, here's where it gets even more twisted. After luring his victims, he strangled or suffocated them, burying 26 in a crawl space under his house. The others? Dumped into rivers or buried around his property. This guy had it his own graveyard and no one even had a clue. The end of Gacy's reign of terror came after the disappearance of 15-year-old Robert Peace in 1978, leading to Gacy's arrest. Found guilty of 33 murders, Gacy was sentenced to death, meeting his end by lethal injection in 1994. Okay, okay, these last two pretty much make the ones so far seem like a walk in the park. Literally, this next guy legit had the name Night Stalker. And trust me, it's worse than it sounds. 6. Richard Ramirez, aka The Night Stalker. Picture this, you're living your best life in sunny California in the mid-1980s when suddenly there's a monster under your bed. And guess what? It's not your imagination. It's Ramirez creeping around turning the Golden State into his personal horror movie. Born on a leap year, because of course, why not add a sprinkle of extra to his backstory? This dude had a rough start in El Paso, Texas. A couple of head bunks and some unsavory family influences later. He's all grown up and ready to dive into a life of crime. And not just any crime. We're talking a buffet of horror, murder, burglary, and a side dish of Satanism. Because why not commit to one hobby, apparently? From 1984 to 1985, Ramirez went on a spree attacking random people with everything from guns to hammers. His lack of a consistent pattern was like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded, leaving the police scratching their heads, which seems to be a common theme on this list. But every spree must come to an end, and Ramirez's bash concluded with a neighbor watch on steroids. The locals in East Los Angeles spotted him and, like a scene straight out of a vigilante movie, they decided they weren't going to wait for the cops. His capture turned into a block party with a purpose. His trial? 
Netflix worthy before Netflix was even a thing. Convicted of a laundry list of crimes, this guy was sentenced to play the waiting game on death row, only to check out courtesy to mother nature in 2013. Okay, okay. This next one is very scary, and it might be a name you have heard. This guy has a huge reputation for probably being one of the worst people to ever exist. Literally, this guy, well, eight people. Okay, let me just show you who he is. Seven, Jeffrey Dahmer. This guy was clearly never taught the difference between food and humans because this dude chomped his way through a number of humans with literally no remorse. Literally the devil. Picture this, a guy so chillingly calm about his gruesome hobby that when the police finally caught up with him, they found a real life horror museum in his apartment. Jeffrey Dahmer, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, was not your average guy, obviously. Well, unless you know many cannibals, which is very concerning if you do. Between 1978 and 1991, Dahmer's twisted desires led him down the path of unimaginable horror, ending the lives of 17 young men and boys. His crimes weren't just about murder, they were a cocktail of nightmares, dismemberments, and oh yes, cannibalism was something out of the creepiest thriller. He lured his victims with promises of cash or a good time, only to drug them, strangle them, or beat them to death. But the real shocker came on July 22nd, 1991, when a lucky guy managed to escape and led the police straight to Dahmer's door. What they found in Dahmer's apartment was a scene so grotesque it would make vultures gag. Photos of dismembered bodies, skulls, and, well, you get the picture. As the trial unfolded, Dahmer's defense tried to play the insanity card, but the jury wasn't buying it. They slapped him with 15 consecutive life terms. But here's the kicker. Dahmer's stay behind bars was cut short when he got the taste of his own medicine and was beaten to death by a fellow inmate in 1994. Dahmer's saga is a stark reminder of the monsters that can hide in plain sight. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it was a kind of morbid topic. If you liked, go watch my last video and sub but only if you enjoyed the video thanks